Hello, thank you for joining me. We're going to paint a beautiful lighthouse today. We've got a lot of work to do and we're going to have to work pretty rapidly. So let's go right onto the canvas and get started. Let's put out a puddle of Snow White. Let's put out two puddles of Snow White. To one, we're going to add Georgia clay. To the other, we will add True Blue. Okay, and I'm going to take my brush and do a little bit of mixing in the adding. Okay, can you see I'm just going to dip the corner of my brush into the Georgia clay, pick up a little bit of water, thin the paint just a little. Oh, let me just show off here and use a spritz and do this. I want this paint a little bit thin, so I'm going to just thin it down before I start working with it. Georgia clay is sort of strong, so I want a soft, peachy look. So I'm adding a lot of white. I'm just really tinning, tinning the clay. And I think we have just about the consistency and the color that we want. So let's go to the palette now. This is the horizon area through here, and that's where we're going to start. And what I'm going to try to do is, and I'm not going to try, I am going to do it. I am not going to have any harsh edges except around my buildings as I paint upward into the sky. Can you see how I'm making some of the strokes higher than others? Paint sort of dripping off the brush there. Let me light it a little bit. Some of the strokes are a little bit higher than others. That keeps you from having a harsh edge to contend with trying to Trying to blend it in a little bit later once we lay the blue in. Okay, let's move over to this side and let's continue on across. Okay, now out in here, we can just have a good time. We're not working around the buildings anymore, so we can just kind of put it on slap happily. And that's sort of the way I like to paint anyway. Okay, now I'm going to go to another brush and use, go back to the palette again. White, dip the brush into the blue, and tint the white with the blue. Won't you paint real, real workable? Cut a little bit thinner than mayonnaise consistency. Okay, back to the palette. Let's fill in the sky now. Now I'm trying to stay away from the peach color. Uh, the Georgia clay. Can you figure why? Sure you can. I don't want to get it on my brush until I'm ready to do some blending. Because the two colors mixed together, one will sort of cancel the other and we'll end up with sort of a, oh, a nothing, nothing color, kind of a neutralized Neutralized color. All right, I'm going to let the sky dry just a little bit before I blend the edges. So while that's drying, while the sky is drying, I can be working in the water. This is a span of water across here, and I can be filling it in. I'm being ever so careful not to get up into that uh, peach color yet. You probably can't see it, but there's a little narrow outline that I've left. Okay, now pretend the buildings are not even there. We would go straight through and pick up the water on this side. And now I'm standing at an angle, and I can't tell too well, but I'm going to get in front of the canvas just a minute 
and see if my line is straight. Not quite. So I'm going to go on up a little bit higher here and hope that my colors won't bleed. We're in business now. Now I'm going to take the fan brush and do a little blending in the sky. We'll start in the horizon. I go right on into the edges of the lighthouse. Right on into the edges of the buildings. Right on into the blue. And soften all of the edges down there. If you think this area in here is a little bit too bright to suit you, I think ours is working pretty well. But when you paint it at home, if you think it's a little bit too bright, while you have the blue on your brush, just kind of skim across it and it'll, it'll cut your intensity for you. It'll neutralize your color a little bit. Okay, I like that. Let's blend the water a little bit. And we are ready to start some pretty work. I'm going to clean this blue off of this building. Okay. Easy cleanup with water, isn't it? That's one of the great things about acrylics. I love working with acrylics. And I especially love working with these liquid acrylics. And I especially love the price of liquid acrylics. They're so inexpensive. Okay, now let's fill in the dune. Go back to the big brush. And what am I using? I'm using the same mixture that we used in the, in the horizon. The very same mixture. Now I'm going to show you something that's so pretty I'm not going to be able to stand it. Let's go to a softer brush. Oh, what did I do with my softer brush? And let's get some boysenberry. We're going to mix it with the true blue. And we're going to lay some shadows in on this wet dune. Everywhere you would have grasses growing, you would have shadows, wouldn't you? Yes, you would. We're going to have little rows of grasses coming across here. And then I'm going to take my trusty little mop brush and do a little bit of blending. Now remember, that's where we're going to put our grasses later. You think of um, you think of dunes as being white, but they're not. They they pick up all of the colors surrounding them. They they pick up um, they would pick up the sky colors, and the shadow color would be a little bit darker. And you are going to see a beautiful sight. Let's add a little more pink in a, in a few places. A little more boys and berry. If we just had a white dune, or an off-white, and no shadows, you would have a blah painting. This is sort of like a snow painting. You've got to work your shadows. Okay, now we've about worked ourselves out of a place to work, so what we're going to do, the sky's dry, so we can't paint in the lighthouse yet. I mean wet. The dunes are wet, so we can't put the weeds in yet, but we can work on the um, water. I think I'll get out some ebony black and add it to my blue and go ahead and get some shadows and highlights in the water.
let it move just a little bit. I darken it right here. Skip over to the other side. Okay, we can get some highlights in too. Just using white for that. Okay, now I think we're getting dry enough in that area that we can start doing some of our fine, beautiful work over in there. So let's be safe and do the roof of the buildings first. Georgia clay, white, a little bit of dark chocolate. Let's do this one. Okay, now let's darken the top just a little bit with dark chocolate. Notice the angle of the strokes, that's so important. Let's darken this one. Let's add a shadow underneath. Dark chocolate. Another thing about these acrylic paints is they're non-toxic too. And if you get them, get the paint on your hands and you inadvertently or, you know, kind of, well, inadvertently, carelessly. Get the paint in your mouth or you get a little on your hands and you don't have your hands real good and clean, it won't hurt you. I know when we're teaching classes, we always have goodies to eat, <laughs> paint on our hands, and we try to pick, the, pick it up with a paper towel or a fingernail or something, but we always have donuts and a lot of good stuff. Okay, now I'm going to add white to that mixture and a touch of Georgia clay and fill in the remainder of the house. But it won't hurt you. We do a lot of eating in our classes. Okay, now I am going to be daring. Dare to be daring. And I'm going to start the lighthouse. Now use the purple mixture plus a little bit of dark chocolate. You want to go with me? Are you ready? That's our shadowed side. The light side would be a horizon mixture with a little bit more white. Our middle value would be the two mixed together. You 
little bit dark at the base. And I believe we have us a lighthouse. Hope it doesn't have any little ripples in it, but if it does, when you paint it, you can straighten them up. Put the dark mixture on the dark side, the light on the light. Blend the two together. This is going to be the windows. Might as well get those underpainted. Let's get the top on it. Adding a little more white. Then we use the dark mixture for the dark side. And blend. You would see a little bit of the underside through here. You would have window panes. I'm going to stop and put a little highlight right here because this is um, this is giving the effect of the the top of the dome coming down this way, and it doesn't. It goes up at an angle. What you're seeing here is the underside, so we must fix that. I cannot stand it. There we go. All of these lines would go upward. All of these curves would go upward. Okay, let's start on some of the rails. Upward, upward curve. And I'm using a small brush for this, a small round, and I'm using thin paint. Upward, upward curve. You'd see the underside. You would have some supports to hold it. Let's put them, oh, that's a little bit crooked. Let's straighten that up. Put some supports up here. They gotta be held some way, don't they? Okay, then you would have rails. Okay, let me tell you a common mistake that a lot of people make is they'll lean these two end rails, they'll lean them out this way because they feel like they're looking up on the lighthouse, but they have to be straight. They have to come straight down or else people would fall right off, wouldn't they? And what I'm doing here is just sort of tidying up the edges. A little bit. All right, let's get some highlights in the windows now. Okay, now the windows would be darker in one corner. I believe we about got it. All right, how about a doorway? Well, let's put the window here first and then big tall doorway here and another window here. Got some windows on this building too. Using a blue gray for that. You know the mixtures. 
be your black, your blue, and white. Let's put some panes in them. Cross pieces. Window frames. Let's build these houses right. Put a little shadow under it like it's old, a little bit too much of a shadow there. Normally just take it right back off. We don't want that. Okay, now let's start with some of the greenery. That's what I have been dying to do. Midnight green and dark chocolate. I have been dying to do this. You are going to love it so. Using the fan brush. Let's see if everything, everything's pretty well established so we can go with this now. I need to pull right up over the base of the, the lighthouse a little bit. Right on down the edges here. Let's find our shadows and then go with our grassy area. And you don't want this too thick. You want to be able to see through it here and there. Got to leave an open, a little sandy open in there to get in and out of that lighthouse too. few little scattered weeds here and there. Now notice on the end of the on the end of the grassy row, what do I do? I just barely tap. And that way I get the soft, narrow effect and the he the thicker weeds, the heavier weeds are up on top of the dunes. Scatter a few here and there. Okay. Let's go to a smaller brush and add a fence. Right over in here, just for a little interest. Now, what are we going to have to do? Let's really dress it up and put some shadows from that fence. Look at that. Right across your dune. Right across your doom. Let's hook it together some way. Okay, a little highlight with the orange mixture. And we're just going to have to have some birds. We have no choice. Let's underpaint with blue, ebony black, a little bit of white, get a blue gray. How about one here? Get a little bit, little bitty, um, kind of a little brush stroke to suggest a body there. Little bitty mustache birds over in the horizon area. Now, the closer to the water they are, the smaller they would be because the farther back in the distance they are. And just put a, 
put a lot of them over in there. Now we're going to go back and highlight these birds, the big birds, with white. White goes on top of the wings. Well, I like it and I love it. Let's emphasize the shadows underneath the underneath the um, buildings a little bit more. Push the roofs up just a little bit. Darken this side of the building. Let the light be coming from this direction. And I know one other thing I would love to do. Get a little bit of blue on the edge of this building. Okay, let's put a little bit here, and I believe that will do it for today. I've enjoyed being with you. I've enjoyed every minute. Bye-bye. <laughs>